So, lots to talk about in this video. I'm kind of excited. Um, there, here's your preface. Um, first, actually, uh, thank you to Prodigy2186, whatever, whatever it is. The Prodigy, we know him, um, for sending me a request to look into this idea called Bitcoin, uh, which is, in very simple terms, a alternative currency that is completely electronic and maintained, and the authenticity of it is maintained through a peer-to-peer proof-of-work network system that I will explain in more detail because I know a lot of that is jargon that most people don't understand, neither did I when I first uh, looked into this. So what I did is I went out and I found the technical paper that, pr that first proposed the idea of Bitcoin, circumventing all the second source bullshit that you can get out there, which is a very good research thing to do, by the way. And we're going to walk through it and see what we make of it. The, the importance of this, it goes beyond just this argument of fiat currency versus commodity-based currency, like gold standard kind of stuff, because um, this is neither. This is neither a fiat currency, um, and I don't think in the most strict sense, nor is it a commodity-based uh, currency in the strictest sense either. It's kind of a third creature. Um, and what's important about it is that it recognizes that online currency presently anyway, that one, currency is, is largely digital today. And two, um, the only way to authenticate the, that digital currency is through a third party financial institution. The problem with that is twofold. One, it costs money then for that third party to be involved. And two, uh, the government can come in or some other coercive force can come in and apprehend that nexus or that hub of transactions such as the financial institution and, um, and do some nasty dictatorial authoritarian kinds of stuff. A real world example of this is when WikiLeaks was jumping up and down about whatever they do and pissing people off in the government like they do. Um, the government was able to go over to PayPal, twist PayPal's arm and freeze WikiLeaks account such that those people could not have access to their own money. Not cool. Not cool. It's because financial institutions in that way anyway are using a kind of server-client relationship, uh, which is terminology you might be familiar with in, in networking and in, in internet speak, where you have essentially a hub of information um, where different computers talk to each other through that one hub, that, that central point, that nexus. Um, and uh, so it, it's not just in, in networking, it's not just in internet speak that we talk about this kind of master-slave relationship where everything is, 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 is it's a top-down structure, really, if you look at it socio sociologically, yeah. But anyway, this idea of a peer-to-peer -peer network is interesting because it does away with that top-down structure. Um, Peer-to-peer -peer networks are going to be uh, networks where everyone acts as both a client and a server to some extent. If you're familiar with Napster, then you're familiar with peer-to-peer -peer networks. Uh, that you were able to download stuff so fast off of Napster when it was up and running, and you know BitTorrent, LimeWire, all that other kind of stuff. Um, although they shut down LimeWire, didn't they? Uh, FrostWire, whatever. There's a ton of them. Um, because your computer is sharing processor power with other computers on that network. It's really kind of a cool thing. It's almost like um, socialism for cyberspace. And we'll see where, where it goes. Um, that being said, we need a, a system of authentication in this because it's very easy to duplicate digital currency. And after you duplicate it, even worse, uh, you're, you're not sure which one was the first one. And it's very difficult, if not impossible, to determine which uh, bit of information that you're saying is a Bitcoin or an e-currency, whatever, uh, was the first and which one was the second. Presently, that's, that's called the, um, the problem, what is it, the double spending problem. And it essentially, double spending, counterfeit. That's all, that's all you need to know. Um, and the way that they've, they've, the contemporary response to that is this system of digital signatures where each piece of electronic currency has its own little code with it, a little identification number. And all these little bits of electronic 
currency go whizzing through, again, a central hub like a financial institution like PayPal, and PayPal makes sure that there aren't any duplicates. It's not a perfect system, though, because when they do find a duplicate, they don't know who sent it. Um, it's very difficult to tell. And even if they could ascertain it, whether it was the merchant or the customer, um, either party who sent it might have been unaware that it was theirs, that it was counterfeited in the first place. They could have got it from somewhere else that didn't catch it. And, and so it's, it has its problems. That being said, is there a solution in using a peer-to-peer -peer system of authentication rather than this top-down, let all the money go through this central you know, checking agency that also has control over all the accounts that the government can kind of screw with if they don't like you? Okay. So for people who are interested in freedom, uh, freedom of your own wealth and markets and that kind of stuff, this should be interesting. Here we go. Uh, oh, I actually talked a lot. Okay, good. We can get right into the thick of it then. Um, okay, so the purpose of this video is to entertain the idea of an electronic peer-to-peer -peer form of currency called Bitcoin. To do this, we should first review some jargon concerning e-commerce. First, the double spending problem, which we talked about, which is when um, e-money is copied or counterfeited um, and used in purchases. And it's very easy to do without an authentication process or system, which contemporarily we have with this digital signature stuff, which is essentially an ID for transactions using e-money, and that which allows tracking of that money and spotting that double spending business. But it requires a third um, it's a, a trust, basically, a trust um, agency, you know, a financial institution that both parties agree to trust and to mediate those kinds of disputes, which is just a pain in the ass because if you just, if, you, if you're able to trust each other and cut that middleman out, the, proce uh, the, the price of processing transactions drops, meaning the cost of goods and services drops and you don't let the government fiddle with it, which is good if this works. Um, so then this, this business about proof of work is very important in this peer-to-peer -peer idea. Proof of work is when the computer, uh, when computer time or process of power is required of a sender for data before data is accepted by a receiver. This is essentially how our spam folder works. Um, businesses that are based on a model where they send out a ton of advertisements at very, very little cost per message, um, it's assumed anyway, is not also going to donate a lot of their processor power to each individual message. That's counter counterproductive. The point is, as little energy as possible, as little processor power as possible to produce the most amount of messages hoping to grab some potential customers. So how your uh, spam folder works is that it can read the time, the processing power, and the computer power invested into the creation of that message such that if it is below a certain standard, whatever your standard is on your, on your filter, um, it'll refile that into your spam folder. Uh, yes. So, and then one type of proof of work is is what is called um, hashing. So hashing is crunching data into smaller packets. Um, typically hashing is going to be used as a process used in um, indexing programs. So you have a, a big file, you crunch it down into a smaller piece so that the computer can read through your files faster and retrieve that information at a, at a quicker speed. It's, it's an indexing system essentially. Um, but it trend it's it's crunching stuff and then the last bit i know i know i know lots of bracketing three basically three elements here is the proof of work hashing and this last thing called time stamping and we'll bring it all together so stay with me time stamping is a sequence of characters denoting the time when a certain event occurred usually used in logging programs i'm assuming anyway i'm not an expert here but i'm assuming that it's time stamping that you'll see in instant messaging programs where you can create a log of events or any other kind of program where you have a log um, where you have a timekeeping kind of structure to it. So what is being proposed here in Bitcoin is that we combine the idea of timestamping, hashing, and proof of work to create a system of authentic authentication 
that is an alternative to digital uh, signatures, which would make the in between the middleman, the financial institution like PayPal or whatever, void, null, uh, moot. They go away. Awesome. So <laughs> this is how it works. If we were to combine timestamping with an ongoing hash-based proof-of-work system within a network, we would produce an ever-growing log or chain of data accessible by all the users in the network, which could be used to authenticate transactions and prevent double spending. If computers are told to accept only the longest chain of data as the authentic record when a computer joins the network, the longest chain of data would provide a complete log of the events witnessed in that network while the computer was offline and proof that it came from the largest pool of CPU power, something that would not characterize independent rogue users attempting to manipulate the record to counterfeit um, in, in their own interests. That being said, let's cut through all the secondary source bullshit that you normally get on the internet and go right to the technical paper now that we've defined all that jargon because you will magically be able to understand this abstract. technical, but I bet you understood more of that than what you thought you might have. Um, if you're interested in what I'm thinking, I'm concerned that if the longest chain of data, right, that we're making through this time stamping and hashing and proof of work business, um, our, we log on, our computer recognizes the longest chain and uses that as the basis of authentication, and the longest chain of data is created merely by the largest pool of CPU power, then there is nothing to keep, say, 51% of network users or nodes uh, from colluding and producing counterfeit currency that would uh, be accepted as the authentic record by the other 49% of the network users. Judging by the abstract, there may not be a solution to this problem, at least not at the moment. Meaning, the weakness to Bitcoin is that in the, if the majority of users or nodes collude and manipulate the proof of work to commit counterfeit, they will always get away with it, so long as their collusion creates an identical fraudulent record and they make up 51% or more of the network. However, to argue with myself, a worldwide network where there would be hundreds of millions of nodes. Such would be plausible in the strictest sense, but perhaps not realistic. Meaning the greatest defense Bitcoin has against this weakness is the size of the network. The bigger the network is, the more difficult it would be for 51% of the nodes to collude and attack the, uh, the overall system. The full paper, the full technical paper, there is linked in the info box for your reference. We'll go through this a little bit more. We'll talk about we'll get we'll talk about marks, I assume, in the next video because we're going to talk about um, value use value um, as opposed to uh, whatever other kinds of value there are out there. And, and again, it's a bunch of words and terms that we'll have to define as we go. So, do you agree with my concern? Do you have some concerns of your own concerning Bitcoin? Um, do you have some thoughts? Uh, did I say anything wrong? Uh, this is all new information to me. Uh, call me out. That's fine. Otherwise, share your own ideas. I look forward to reading your comments, and I'll see you again soon.